Hi everyone, this is a video tutorial for primary and secondary alcohol substitution reactions that result in the formation of an alkyl halide. So when we're talking about primary and secondary alcohols, there are three different reagents that we'll primarily look at. So in this case here, you can react the primary or secondary alcohol with phosphorus tribromide in the presence of pyridine. When you do this reaction, an alkyl bromide will come out. A very similar case as well is using the primary or secondary alcohol with phosphorus trichloride, also in the presence of pyridine. The nice thing about these two reactions is the mechanism is virtually identical outside of a chlorine versus a bromine substitution that happens. So later on in this tutorial, we'll take a look at that mechanism. The third and final reagent is SOCl2, reacting with your primary or secondary alcohol, once again in the presence of pyridine. When we take a look at these mechanisms, we'll see why pyridine is so important. And at the end of this reaction here, you get out your alkyl chloride. So we're going to take a look at these two types of mechanisms as we continue on in the tutorial. Okay, so let's take a look at this mechanism. So over here we have our secondary alcohol. As always, the first step is to activate the O group so that we're able to kick it off later on in the mechanism. So the O with its lone pairs will come and SM2 attack that phosphorus, causing the bromide group to get kicked off. Notice that though it is an SN2 attack that's happening, it's not an SN2 on the carbon, it's SN2 on the phosphorus. What that means is this O configuration on that C will not be inverted. So now to prevent the reaction from going backwards, we put pyridine in the reaction so that it can come and deprotonate this O, giving its electrons. So now it's a much more stable group. Now O and P have really strong bonds because of really good o orbital overlap that they have. So what will happen then is that this is now a very good leaving group. So my bromide can come and backside attack this carbon, kicking off this group which then forms this alkyl halide right here, where the bromide has an inverted configuration to the original alcohol. Okay, so let's take a look at this mechanism. So as always, the first step is to activate that O group to make it a good leaving group for a later SN2 attack. So what we're gonna have is this O with its electrons will come and attack this sulfur, which causes this chloride group to get kicked off. So we would form this product here where that O is protonated. O is not very typically happy having a positive charge on it, so we put this pyridine in here so that it can come and deprotonate the O, taking off this H and giving O its electrons. So then we form this compound here. And now this compound is ready for the SN2 attack because we've got some pretty good leaving groups happening on this side. So what's going to happen is your chloride is going to come and backside attack this O, meaning it's going to have the opposite configuration. And these electrons are not going to fall directly on the O. Instead, they're going to be shifted down to form a double bond between this S and O, which then causes this chloride group to get kicked off. So now at the end of that, we've got this alkyl halide, where because it's an SN2 attack that happens on that carbon, we're going to have inverted product configuration. We also have SO2 and Cl-. And now you know how to do that mechanism.